Welcome to the August 15th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. At this time, I would request that everyone please turn off or mute all cell phones, and please at this time stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Applications for rezonings heard during tonight's meeting will be, will be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Commission will then make a recommendation on the applications, which will be submitted to the St. Charles County Council for their final decision. The individual items and bills for this evening's applications are scheduled to be introduced at the Monday, September 10th, 2018 County Council meeting. Applications for preliminary plats heard during tonight's meeting will also be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission during the meeting. The vote on preliminary plats is final. Only a recommendation for denial of a preliminary plat would be heard before the County Council. The following documents are introduced as a matter of record for this evening's public hearing and regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Those documents are the Unified Development Ordinance of St. Charles County, including zoning maps, the year 2025 master plan for St. Charles County, which includes the year 2025 future land use plan map. We've had uh, changes to our agenda. Um, rezoning and conditional use permit request located at 7800 Highway Inn. This is the Roden Brothers Property LLC application for a uh, storage facility. If you're here for that, that application has been, been withdrawn, okay? So if you're here for that, that has been withdrawn uh, for our consideration. Uh, in addition, uh, rezoning and conditional use permit request at 5566 Highway P. Uh, this is an application by James and Paula Dames. Uh, again, this was for a storage facility uh, located on Highway P. That application has been withdrawn, will not be considered by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So if you're here for any one of those uh, items, those have been withdrawn. Uh, in addition, uh, the re preliminary plat for Timberwolf Farms, Old Colony Road, uh, that matter was tabled at the last uh, Planning and Zoning meeting and it will remain on the table until the September meeting. So if you're here for that, that will not be heard this evening. Okay. Um, how we will proceed, uh, I will uh, call the first application. We'll ask the applicant to come forward, uh, be sworn in, and uh, present their application. Uh, staff will uh, make a uh, presentation uh, the council, uh, the commission rather, can ask questions of the applicant. Um, and then we will go to a public hearing. Uh, anyone present can speak uh, regarding the application. Okay. Uh, once the public hearing is closed, uh, it is closed. Uh, then we will bring the applicant back to address any concerns raised in the public hearing or any further questions by the commission. And then we will uh, proceed to take a vote. If you are going to speak, we ask you to fill out one of our speaker cards that are here on, on the rail so that we get your name uh, correct in our record. Uh, the first application for this evening for consideration is RZ18-08. Owner is Rawls Winsville Family Partnership LP. Applicant is Echelon Con Contractors uh, Constructors LLC. Current zoning is A Agricultural District. Requested zoning is C2 General Commercial District. The area consists of 1.81 acres. It is located on the southeast corner of the intersection of Highway Inn and Morton Lane near the cities of Lake St. Louis and O'Fallon, Missouri, located in Council District 2. Staff. Good evening. Uh, again, this is a rezoning request from a agricultural district to C2. General Commercial District. The property is located on the south side of Highway N, 
just west of Duella Road, Hopewell Road intersection, which by the way is, that intersection is now undergoing an upgrade. Um, also, you may know that Highway N is, uh, in our thoroughfare plan, it shows it as a future um, part of our thoroughfare system. Currently, there's a 50-foot right-of-way on Highway N in front of this property. At some point, we're looking at the possibility of 120 feet, 120-foot uh, wide right-of-way. So at some point in the future, this roadway is expected to be widened and improved as part of a uh, longer range transportation system. Again, this property zone agricultural, the application is for um, commercial. Uh, can you go back to the, thank you. This map that you'll see here, this shows the current zoning situation. The white, that's areas that are currently annexed or they're currently in within municipal limits. To the north you have Lake St. Louis, to the east you have the city of O'Fallon. So this really actually borders or across the street basically from city of Lake St. Louis. The colored areas are in the unincorporated county and have county zoning jurisdiction. So what's red is commercial zoning now. What's green is agricultural zoning currently. On the north side of Highway N is uh, city of Lake St. Louis, they provide sewer. On the south side, it's uh, Decca Creek. So uh, in this application, if you go to the next slide, please. The master plan, is it, down highway in the master plan is, it's, you might say it's a broad brush. It doesn't follow property lines, it's more conceptual, but it actually splits these two properties between two different recommendations, one for future commercial, the other for future um, higher density residential. Um, essentially though, I think that the application does conform to what's the master plan's vision for commercial or, or bordering commercial. One of the limiting factors for this property though, I think, is sewer service. It's less than two acres combined, these two parcels. Um, it's in the Ducket Creek sewer service area, but it's not anywhere close to actual public sewer service. So whatever goes on this property during the interim before it gets eventual sewer connection, it's gonna to have to be some use that can be supported, supported by uh, on-site septic system. So you might keep that in mind in terms of um, recommendation for whatever zoning uh, district. The applicants have provided a concept plan where they're looking at uh, not only rezoning this to C2 general commercial district, but also, um, I don't think I included that in the drawing, but. But the concept plan, which is in your packet, would include um, a uh, youth sports, indoor youth sports, and uh, a building of, I think, maybe about 8,000 square feet, a parking lot layout, and it's all conceptual. It's not required at this time that they follow any necessary, necessarily any um, particular plan, because commercial zoning would allow for a broad range, as you know, of, of different uses. But this is the concept that they have in mind, the reason they're, they're seeking this commercial zoning. I guess from a planning standpoint, my one reservation is the parcel is only um, is less than two acres and um, it's not tremendously deep. So whatever the future use is here is gonna have to accommodate the building, uh, parking, um, landscape uh, buffers, um, on-site uh, stormwater detention, and a septic uh, system. Now luckily what this particular use they're proposing here, it's not gonna be have a he heavy septic um, um, demand. Uh, it sounds like it's probably like basically two bathrooms and maybe a, a sink or a water fountain, something like that. So that's probably, uh, as best we can determine, that's workable. Uh, we've spoken to uh, our um, building and code enforcement division, the, the person that handles septic, and they th think that it's, uh, uh, conceptually, it's, it, it's very workable. Um, so with that, I would say that from county staff's perspective, 
uh, we would recommend that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of the rezoning from agricultural to C2 um, general business district. But again, I would just let everyone know that it's really gonna be, if should this be rezoned to commercial, it's gonna be up to the property owner to meet all of the setback requirements, including this additional setback requirement that I mentioned having to do with the widening of uh, Highway Inn. Right now, it's the right of way is only 50 feet. Someday, it's projected to be 120 feet wide. And we wanna ensure that whatever's developed here at the time of the site plan approval, it meets the setback requirements so that someday the roadway is not, doesn't, isn't widened to take out the parking lot or, or take out a building or something like that. Any questions for staff? Mr. Griffin. Yeah, uh, on the C2, what definition is this falling under? Is this under um, number 19, under uh, permissive uses? Is 19 indoor commercial? Um, uh, it's health record. club and exercise club, reducing salon and athletic club. Is that where this is falling? I'm trying to get my head around from C1 and C2. We're going from agricultural, we're gonna to go to C2 instead of yeah. looking at C1. I probably should hear from the applicant, have them describe exactly what they're thinking about to answer that question. That would help me make a determination. Yes, sir. I guess I'm, my concern is going to be on the twofold on, on septic and also on the setbacks. Mm -hmm. um, I, their conceptual plan shows an awful lot of, of paved surface. Um, if, there's that many, if there's that many cars, I think we m may be under guessing a little bit on the, on the amount of, of uh, effluent that would be leaving the building. Mm -hmm. um, the, I don't know, the parking lot looks like it's got Thank you, 97 parking, and it says so right there, doesn't it? Um, so is there really enough, if the parking lot gets moved back off of, of N, would there really be enough room for a, uh, for a septic field, given that that ground to the, to the south would be taken more for uh, um, parking? Uh, I can't say for certain. Um, I've just seen the, the concept plan. I would say that there may not be enough room on this lot for all of that parking or the building of that size. It might have to be somewhat smaller or the parking might have to be, have fewer parking spaces. Uh, so um, that's a, that is a possibility. Okay. So Robert, when, when we, uh, I guess the projected uh, lane widening, what will, when they do actually produce a plan, is that gonna to have to be taken into consideration in terms of, so the right of way is 50 feet now and you're saying 120 feet, if they take roughly half from each side, that means there'd be an additional 35 feet off the frontage of this property. Um, right. Is that, so when they come in with a plan, is that gonna be part of what's already gonna be considered that additional, let's say 35 feet for right of way? Yes. Uh, when uh, when uh, we get a site plan application for this property, we, we need to take that additional setback into account. There's a specific provision in our zoning regulations that says that the setback of a building shall be X plus whatever the thoroughfare plan show, half of what the thoroughfare plan needs are. And so for instance, the sports barn, just a couple blocks from here, west of here on Highway N, we did just that. And I would say they had a difficult time fitting everything on their lot with this additional setback requirement. They were able to make it work, but it was, it was tight. Thank you. What kind of, where's their access to Highway N? Is it on the west side of the, of the property there? That's, that's all they have that? The, that one piece of information we haven't heard back yet from MoDOT on where their access would be. Oh. Um, I can't imagine that they would say they can't have any access. Um, so I don't know exactly yet where MoDOT would approve that driveway access. Oh, okay. Any further questions of staff? Applicants come forward. Okay. We'll just do Good evening. Both, both My name of you at the same time. Raise your hand. 
You swear or affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings and the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, sir. Please independently state you. your name and address for the records, please. My name is Ryan Barr. I'm with Echelon Constructors. Address is 1850 Craigshire Road, Suite 306, St. Louis, Missouri. <coughs> my name is Paul Battaglia, and my address is 140 Long Road, Suite 121, Chesterfield, Missouri, 63005. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So uh, obviously this is a consolidation of two lots that we're looking for for a gymnastics facility. Gymnastics being, and I'll let Paul, who's the owner of the facility, uh, elaborate a little bit more, but on a youth training for competitive as well as recreational gymnastics and tumbling and so forth. So if you want to elaborate on it. Okay, so uh, we run classes from about two years old to about 14 years old um, for 50 minutes or 60 minutes at a time. They come in primarily for tumbling, gymnastics, and uh, like trampling uh, instruction. And we, oh, I'm sorry, we operate, we, we have a few preschool classes in the morning, 10 to 10.50. The bulk of our business comes in in the evening. We run three classes, 4.50 to 5.50, 6 to 7, and 7, 10 to 8, 10. <laughs> and we're predominantly an after school uh, industry just because most of the kids are five and up and are in full day school. So, so let me address the sanitary issue. Uh, we have rectified that. We've already worked with uh, Sandy May. We've done uh, soil testing out there and done preliminary design for the septic system. We're also going to design it for when Ducket Creek finally brings it down that we'll tie into the to the mainline service when they come down to it. We've been working with Ducket Creek on what their timeline is. It's undetermined as of yet when they're planning on coming down there. Could be you know a couple of years, um, but um, we have already done the soils testing and gave those reports to Sandy, and she's reviewed it and, and given us preliminary approval on on the septic for this facility. Looked at the loads and the uh, for our effluent. Questions? Yeah. Um, so you own the property. You're going to develop it, and then you're also going to operate the business. We are. We have the property under contract contingent on zoning approval okay so then, upon closing of that yes this he will be the owner and the developer of the uh, of the facility and, and, and you, it, yes sir you'll be operating it mm -hmm. yes. do you have you uh, had experience um, running one of these facilities now some other location 22 years sir yes sir. another location here in st. Louis or st. Um, st. Charles County we have three locations currently two in Chesterfield one in Eureka okay yes what are you going to do with the uh, stormwater? So stormwater will have to be designed for on-site detention to meet, you know, regulations. We have the, uh, you know, if you had to, if we had to, we'd, you know, we can actually do underground. But we have enough, we have enough room. We have more than ample parking that can actually be removed. We're, it's a, right now that concept design's overparked. So. Yeah, there's more I'm than just a, looking at a concept plan. It's just a concept plan. So until we get zoning, we're not going to do full engineering and stuff on it yet. So, but, but yeah, we should have we should not have a problem fitting that on there. Okay. So a C2 uh, zoning is more of a retail use, is it not? No, it's a broad range of commercial usages. But, but it could be it, including retail, correct? I believe it would it be is. city. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good question. Will you have any outside activities? You mean like assemblies? Or anything outside the building, on the parking lot? No, sir. Okay. And no assemblies either. Okay. And will the parking lot be lit? Yes, we'll have standards, you know, probably 18, 22 foot standard light poles. We, we need that with children exiting the building in the winter, it's dark. Any other questions of the app? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Now we'll open the public hearing. Is anyone present who would like to speak regarding this application for rezoning? I have to take hand against it. Well, if you, if you, come. you have to come up and fill a card out and get sworn in. You saw me swear or affirm that you would tell the truth, the whole 
truth and nothing but the truth in these proceedings on the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you very much, members of the commission. My name is Arnie C. A. C. Dinoff, public advocate and county resident, P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon 63366. Just want to go through some procedural uh, type issues uh, before you grant or um, look into this further. Uh, some of the things that came to my mind that are of question are the lot size, uh, the sewer system, um, the retention detention area. Um, and I don't know if you're aware of commissioners, but the current county road board is undergoing a current highway N road board study. And so I think that you need to take those findings into consideration <laughs> regarding this, as this is the most high volume, um, volatile, most traffic jam part of our county. It's an ever growing area with the cities of Lake St. Louis, Darden Prairie and O'Fallon in the unincorporated parts. Um, if you go there in the mornings and evenings, there's traffic jams all the way from Lake St. Louis Boulevard all the way back, or actually Highway Z all the way back to um, 364 uh, interchanges at Hawk Ridge. Um, there's no landscaping that I see, and I know that that comes in the site plan or, or um, proposed um, the pre-site plan. But I have would like to bring up and make a public record is where the cities of uh, the city of Lake St. Louis and the city of O'Fallon duly notified by the planning and zoning staff uh, of this application as mandated by Missouri State statute. As you all know, they have the right of remonstrance for a supermajority vote of the county council. And if they have any objections, um, I don't see any communications or letters from either of these cities nor do I see any feedback or communication from the Wentzville Fire Protection District or the Public Water District Number 2 who will be servicing this facility, nor do I see any communication or feedback from Ducker Creek Sanitary District, and I don't see any comments or communication from MoDOT, Missouri Department of Transportation. I did reach out and talk to the county engineer, uh, the resident engineer assigned to St. Charles County, and they were not uh, contacted by uh, the county nor were they afforded the opportunity to put public comment, as I think there's some egress and turning in and out <coughs> of this property that needs to be discussed. Nor do I see a traffic study as part of the proposed uh, supporting documents. I think in this case, this is our highest volume in the county currently of traffic concerns and traffic mitigation and uh, backups. And I don't see a traffic study. I think that we're putting the cart before the horse, and I think we need to have that scenario as part of this rezoning process. And finally, I'd like to discuss the trail or sidewalk requirement. Uh, we need to start somewhere on Highway N. We need to start requiring that any uh, either residential or commercial developments that we can make them as part of their development be responsible for the cost of the construction of either a five foot or eight foot trail or sidewalk requirement to meet with ADA, Americans with Disabilities <laughs> Act. Um, as you know, along Highway N, there's a lot of gaps. And we need to start requiring the people who are making improvements to the properties that they also improve the capital infrastructure so taxpayers don't have to pay for that out of our pockets. Um, for those reasons, I ask that this inter intergovernmental uh, discussion and I think the cities of Lake St. Louis and O'Fallon need to come to the table and be part of this discussion. They both have different comprehensive plans that are very different than what the county has currently in, in place. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sir? Please raise your right hand, please. You solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. John Adams, number one, Falling Life Drive. Okay, go ahead. Okay. This is a home next door <clears throat> to where this is going. Can I, you want me to pass this up there? That, that's, can you guys you see, it? Want to see it? see it? Yes. I work hard on this. It's a home, you know. I'm 60 feet. This corner is 60 feet from the property line, 61 feet, because that's the rule for residential. The rule for commercial is like 25 feet. So I might have the sports barn, two-story wall, right up against me. And also, I go to church. Where your other facilities at? John. Sir. Oh, 
I go to church over there, and it's, it's rowdy. It, it's kids, and it's fine. The kids are rowdy over there at the other facility. I go to church on Friday nights, and they're rowdy over there, and that's what's going to be next to me. I didn't realize that until he told me that. Um, but I'd like a six-foot fence. I know there's going to be something there. I'd like a six-foot fence, and I'd like the 60-foot easement or a property, you know, setback. I think that's fair. That's what I've lived with. And the sports barn on Highway N, I bet you the neighbors are not happy with that either. It's two stories tall. It's blocking everything. There's not enough parking. And this is what Howie N looks like. There's a tree of mine. It's probably 20 foot high spruce, a beautiful spruce. They're trying to miss a, a car turning into the place across the street, flew up in my yard and took out a big tree. Now, Pizza Hut driver was the one that did it. Pizza Hut doesn't want to pay for it. Neither does the commercial across the street. So I'm just out of a $1,000 tree. So I don't think this is ready for what he's got. If he wants to put it in, he needs to observe you know, some setbacks and some privacy fences. Questions for John? John, where, where exactly is your house? Can we have the map up? Matt? See where that pond's at? Right there. Yes. That's me. That's my driveway. I put on all those trees that's planted, they're expensive. All the trees along the highway. So how far is your house from that? 61 feet from his property, because that's the rule. And I just ask that they observe that same rule. You're talking about just your property, right? Not the house itself? The house is 60 feet from, 61 feet from the property line, because 60 feet is required. I'm not a public speaker, so thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Anyone else? You solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Kevin Carroll, 9 Falling Leaf Drive, Lake St. Louis, Missouri. I live in the same subdivision. Um, I was always under the, um, that you need three acres for a septic system. Or has that changed? Huh? You know, I always, that's what we were told, that you have to have three acres for a septic system. And like it's been stated, Highway N is terrible. I've lived out here 40 years. And I know there are plans to change Highway N and this and that, but that lot's not that wide. And, you know, to lose another, what, 50, 85 feet, correct? Is that from the center of the road? Or the, the, the um, <coughs> easement? Or is that from the edge of the road? The right of way would be from the center. From the center of the road? Well, it's 120 feet total, so. 60 feet. Yeah, 60 feet from the center line. From the center of the road, yeah. okay. So, you know, that lot's not really that, that deep. It's long, but it's not that deep. Now, and he's claiming that they're going to have now, it's, it's pretty much going to be a, he's claiming that it's a athletic. It sounds like more, it's like a kinder care to me. Now, if you have 95 parking spots, two bathrooms is gonna handle all that waste, and where are you gonna put all the waste? You know, just a thought here, you know. So I appreciate your time. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we will close the public hearing. The applicant wants to come back. <clears throat> Any additional questions of the applicant? Yes, sir. Could you talk to the traffic issue? 
Traffic on N? Yeah. No. I mean, I don't know what the what your traffic counts are on on N or how that applies to your overall master plan. We do know that your long-term plan is for that to be commercial in that area. Um, we also will make sure that our designs meet all the standards of the setbacks, the design loads, the septic loads, the parking counts, the setbacks, the lighting loads. So um, it will be designed per code. So the, the question of, you know, it appears that it's too close or, you know, it doesn't look like it can fit or it looks like it, it'll meet code. So otherwise it won't pass. So our design will be go forward with meeting the, the, the standards of St. Charles County. So, um, and then in reference to uh, perception of, of uh, child care facility, it is a gymnastics training facility. So, um, it will organize and it is not a, uh, an outdoor function to be having rowdy, rowdy kids. The reason for the parking, which we said it is completely over parked, it's a concept design, that is for your drop off and pick up. So the majority of the time, those cars are not there. So it is strictly for your, you know, most of the families are dropping off and picking up their kids for the hour training sessions. So that's you all that's You don't understand why we keep asking about that. You show a parking lot that's 95 cars on it and. That's correct. You know, again, this is a, this is a zoning, plan. zoning plan for its use group. Our you show a, a preliminary site plan that's, that's way correct. overbuilt for that particular area. I'm not an expert like you right. are in this, but I can tell that there, that everything wouldn't fit on there the way you have it in this document tonight that if you can't get if, that if you have your storm water under, under it you could but the but you are correct so in the site improvement plan approval it'll all be detailed and engineered on there a adequately right. while you're up here uh, which was addressed uh, with a septic um, you said you talked to Sandy May how and he's correct, uh, three and five acres, we went from three to five acres in <coughs> septic fields. And it looks like this is gonna be mostly parking lot. How are you gonna handle waste? Well, your with waste doesn't have anything to do with the parking. So your waste is on the, how are you the occupant usage. Yeah, how are you handling septic? So the septic is designed for the, the load of the actual class usage. And we've gone through those numbers with Sandy and the. So you're going, to have truck, you're going to have trucks coming in and uh, taking waste out? No, a, no, no. It's a leach field design that, that we have. Now, it's temporary. It's for until Ducket Creek. We we've <coughs> basically have come to them, and they've approved it based on the fact that we do a, a connection when Ducket Creek provides sewer down that line, which their intent is, too. They're just not there yet. Where are you putting the leach field? Uh, so leach field will be on the south side of, of the parking. So we did test fields along that south property line. And I think we need, if I'm correct, 100, 100 feet. I had to double check the quantities that, that Sandy gave us. But we will be providing an engineered uh, design by our engineers for that, for that temporary field. I got a question more directed at staff. And it's one of the gentlemen uh, follow up on his. I, I was under the same impression that we, on a that we require three acre lots to accommodate uh, septic fields. So fill us in on what, what we require and why wouldn't we sure. require the same thing here? Uh, in our zoning code, uh, newly created lots that are gonna be on septic uh, need to be a minimum of three acres in size. There's an exception in the code for uh, existing lots that can be taken into account on a case by case basis. <coughs> and reviewed by Sandy May, who's our uh, septic um, uh, inspector. And she can, on a case-by-case -case basis, go down to as small as one acre for septic. But I would say that if it's, the smaller you get with the lot, the fancier the system has to be, the more, you know, it may be more costly to do, but it's technologically doable. And again, the intent is it's temporary. And so, you know, that's another proponent to why, you know, it was allowed to kind of go forward. How many, uh, do you have like a class, uh, several classes a day or just individual attention or is it 
uh, how many people will be in the building at one time? How much? How many people will be pulling in and out? You know, at any particular time? Sure. So we'll have hopefully 38 students. Um, we'll have four groups of eight, and then we'll have a preschool group of six. Um, as Ryan mentioned, all but the preschool families drop off, and some of them do as well. We rarely have spectators, as they've got quite a bit to do, and in the areas we are, they're close to where they could be running errands, whether it's Target or Walmart or Shucks. Um, and then we have a staff, we'll have about five staff, we will have five staff in the building to manage that load if we were to get to our uh, full 38. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, are they like, do you, do you teach classes or individuals? I'm sorry, um, 38 students in a time slot. So we'll teach oh. um, five classes, four of them will be eight to one ratio, because they're older and manageable. At, for the preschoolers, we teach six to one is our ratio. Okay. And that would be the fifth class, so 32 and six. Okay. So you'd have 32 students in the building at one time for the time slot. Okay. And that's so usually the maximum right. that you would and, have in there. And with the septic, the, four is 38. <laughs> the 38, right, and so with, with the coaches as, right. as well, right. yes. Um, we, we, we just don't have a lot of um, children leaving the class for toilet breaks. Parents make sure that happens before they get in the car. But, you know. But your restrooms will still be designed for code for the occupancy yes. of the building. We get that. Yeah. So hours of operation again, How, what's the latest hours of operations you'll have? The absolute latest, nine o'clock. Okay. So you'll go up to 10 then? Nine to 10, or is it at nine you'll be done? Oh, at, at nine they'll be out of the building. Okay. Yes, sir. And um, in the morning, we don't start our first class until 10 a.m. But the coaches are there setting up 45 minutes ahead of time. Are you open on the weekend? Yes, sir. We, we do mostly Saturday stuff. We have birthday party. Well, we have two classes, 9.30 and 10.30, and then we open it up for birthday parties. <coughs> birthday parties are much smaller than our classes. <coughs> the average birthday party between 16 and 20 participants. Are you guys are you guys concerned about what I'm sure you are about what's going to eventually happen with Highway N there? I mean, how how many lanes do you think it'll potentially be and I mean, do you have any ideas about that in your access? Um the the, the traffic is attractive to us <clears throat> and we we understand this this the shape of the land would mean that our building would have to be pretty far south to uh, accommodate the easement. And we're willing to do that because the 8,500 or 8,400 square feet works for our business model. Obviously, as a business owner, business owner I would assume he wants that traffic to increase. But <laughs> Obviously, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the access. If, if, if the traffic grows so much on Highway N, are you concerned about losing any access in front of your building there for a turnoff? <coughs> That's, I don't think you have that much traffic there to, okay. to keep it. This isn't Manchester Road. Well, that, that's, what I, that's what they said about Highway N yeah. about 10 years ago. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Manchester Road wasn't Manchester yeah. Road either. But even Manchester Road, you can make your lesson. Well, that's true. Right. So that's many years down the line. Okay. But no, we hope to see that you will do the expansion and see growth and the other 25-year plan go to commercial. We, we do work with a lot of residents from Lake St. Louis and O'Fallon. They currently leave where they live and come to Chesterfield. And um, we'd be serving them better in their neighborhood where they can help their other kids run, they can run errands such as dropping their other child off at the sports barn or um, the, the other activities they have. They aren't having to leave. Okay. Any additional questions with the applicant? Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Abbey. Questions, comments, questions of staff? Yeah, uh, so what's the answer on contacting Lake St. Louis and O'Fallon and all that stuff? What, what's our normal procedures on that? Oh, we did send notification. Um, I did hear back from City of Lake St. Louis and I spoke with the planning director there. And his question really was about um, future right of way expansion for Highway N. That was his concern. So we relayed to him what we discussed here tonight. Uh, didn't hear back from others. We did uh, contact MoDOT with our usual contacts, but I haven't heard back yet in terms of uh, driveway access. But they'll weigh in on this eventually, right? 
eventually they'll have to get a driveway permit from MoDOT. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions of staff? If not, Chair will entertain a motion regarding uh, application RZ18-08, the rezoning of property located at 9930 and 9936 Highway N, from agricultural to a C2. A motion to approve. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Fromm. Mr. McDonald, how do you vote? No. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. Mr. Griffin? No. Mr. McBride? No. I vote yes, Mr. Clary? No. Mr. Leonard? No. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Coon? Yes. Yes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, request fails four, affirmative five, and the negative. Next application is rezoning and preliminary plat for Tuscany Hills, 3742 Totenbush Road. Application RZ18-07 and PRE18-13. Owner developer is James uh, Blondin and Erica Blondin. Uh, engineer survey is Bax Engineering. Current zoning is A Agriculture Cultural District. Requested zoning is RR Single Family Residential District, three acre minimum lot size. Area is 16.337 acres, number of lots to be two. Uh, it's location on the south side of Totenbush Road, approximately 500 feet east of Highway DD in Council District 2. Staff. All right. Um, on this application, uh, they're both really intricately uh, involved with each other. So uh, to discuss the rezoning first, um, we're looking at just the one parcel. This would be lot number one of two lots. And I'm gonna kinda go back and forth with the preliminary plat. The preliminary plat is required because this overall parcel has been divided uh, it's at its, um, its limit. So the remaining two parcels here, the remaining 16.337 has to be uh, platted as a subdivision. Um, the lot number one will only be three acres. And currently under the Unified Development Ordinance with agricultural zoning, if a home was built prior to 2006, uh, it can be parceled off as a three acre parcel. Uh, <coughs> the applicant though did, I explained this to the applicant, but the applicant did want to co go forward with the RR rezoning. Um, and with that RR rezoning, you'll be able to redevelop. Um, this house right now is built in 1971. If they want to redevelop it, uh, there will not, not be any problems with that. Um, sometimes, too, a mortgage company wants you to meet the, the proper zoning, even though you have an exception under the current zoning. So. Uh, staff did look at the surrounding area, and as you see uh, to the north, the White Heron <laughs> is, Estates was rezoned to RR, and then also along Highway, uh, is that D, Highway DD, I'm sorry, I had to stop and think. Highway DD, there, there are several three-acre parcels, so uh, we did, even though the uh, master plan does call for this to remain agricultural, there's clearly some, there's a lot of development of three acre lots. Uh, so with that, staff did recommend um, that you approve the rezoning to RR. Um, I also have the plat here, and it'll show um, both of the, the lots will be accessed directly off of Totabush Road. Uh, so there is ownership of the, of the one lot, lot number two, all the way up to Totabush and then lot number one with the existing house right there also has a driveway 
directly on Totabush Road. Uh, we did have our highway department look at this, and uh, they they had no issue with it. At th this road dead ends, as you know, into the uh, Bush Wildlife Area. <coughs> So with that, staff recommends approval also of the preliminary plat. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, I think it's ready to go, uh, but it's subject to completion of anything else that has been requested on there uh, for completion of the plat. Any letters? Uh, there is, there were no letters. Because in, in our packet, there was a letter from Spire. Well, the, there was a comment yeah. letter. We yeah. do send this out to all the utility companies. We get those back all the time. So um, they do not provide service in the area. Um, it, it's. It's going to be propane if you want gas or anything out there right now. Okay, they were requesting a 10-foot easement. Is that reflected on the plat? They do have a utility easement uh, surrounding the property, yes. And that's typically where we put the utilities. Any questions of staff? The applicant come forward. <coughs> Please raise your hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings on the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jessica Hargrave. I work for Bax Engineering. Address is 221 Point West Boulevard, St. Charles, 63301. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think Ellie pretty much summed it up. Uh, we are creating a two-lot subdivision to cut the three-acre parcel out of the overall 16-acre parcel. Um, the home is existing. There are no new improvements, um, no new house being built, no new roads, anything being proposed at this time. The property owner just wants to divide off the three acres with the house on it um, in case of a buyer um, to sell it off. Um, um, I think um, that should be pretty much it. There's, I'm here to answer questions if there are any. Any questions of the applicant? I guess just one, and, and uh, since they're subdividing, it looks like there's only going to be two lots. Why not just make it five acres and uh, not have the change in the zoning? Um, I think the I, I, at the time when we started this, the, the property owner did have a buyer for the three acres, and they didn't want five acres. They wanted to stay with the three. Um, but I don't know if that buyer is still in line because... Um, they wanted a rather fast closing and with going through this process it was but uh the developer or the property owner wanted to stay with the three acres okay thank you mm -hmm. any other questions of the applicant no thank you thank you we will now open the public hearing is there anyone here to speak regarding this application anyone here if not, we'll close the public hearing and bring you back to the commission. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, hold on. Okay. We'll have to do this in two parts. Um, so the chair will entertain a motion regarding application RZ18-07, which would change the zoning from A Agricultural District to RR. So we're voting only on the rezoning. Is so that your motion, Mr. Yeah. Griffin? Yes. Second. Mr. From okay. Mr. Kuhn, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yep. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Motion passes. Now the chair will entertain a motion for application PRE 18-3, 
which is a preliminary plat for Tuscany Hills located at 3742 Totenbush Road. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Second. Move. Mr. Cleary, second. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yep. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Cleary? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Next is the replatting of lots 49 through 52 of Riverbend Estates, Plat 2 at 9 River Valley Court. Applicant, the application is PRE 18-12. Applicants Stephen L. McKenzie and Heather M. McKenzie, property owners. Stephen L. McKenzie and Heather M. McKenzie, Ryan E. Raphael and Kimberly Raphael, Scotty D. Schaefer and Tim Tammy G. Schaefer, Gerbrand Dietman, Revocable Living Trust, Engineer Surveyor is Volts uh, Incorporated, Property Zoning is R1E, <coughs> Single Family Residential District, Area is 1.44 acres, number of lots 4. Location is on the south side of River Valley Court, approximately 100 feet southwest of Winding River Drive and Council District 7. Staff. All right, um, on this preliminary plat, um, you notice we use the word replatting. It follows under the uh, resubdivision uh, uh, portion of the ordinance under the Uni Unified Development Ordinance. So um, with that, these four property owners are adding some additional land um, to the south of this property and where the addition is. Uh, this is Upper Bottom Road, and uh, if you've ever seen this Upper Bottom Road, right in the middle, it's it's like a drainage area. It's it's very uh, topographically challenged. So uh, I know that the they have already divided this parcel the two times, the you know one time in half, which they're allowed. It's all zoned R1E. Uh, there's an intent eventually they have access here and they're going to build two homes down here but they did have this land left over behind um, <coughs> so that this uh, applicant and the other three homeowners uh, had an opportunity to purchase uh, some additional land and add on to the existing plat um, Staff has is is going forward. Uh, there's no issues that we have. They've agreed that they're going to adopt the same uh, covenants and restrictions of Riverbend Estates. There'll just be a replat of these lots, 49 through 52, I believe, um, and under Riverbend Estates covenants and 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 uh, restrictions. So staff is recommending approval. Any questions of staff? On the uh, plat, it shows uh, on, let's see, the, uh, I guess, what's existing lot 52, the addition to that, it shows a 30-foot temporary construction easement. Is that, did they just fail to release that easement, or what's, what's the story of that? Well, I know we have looked at that. Um, the temporary construction <coughs> easement is, is left from the original plat. And rather than have to remove all of that to go forward with this replatting, um, there's really no intention yeah, this is, this of kind of building thing. anything and crossing over. Um, so staff is willing to, if if the applicants are okay with that, they are willing. We are willing to leave the easements in place. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Applicant, come forward. You solemnly swear and affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings from the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes. Please uh, state your name and address for the record. Steve McKenzie, 9 River Valley Court, St. Charles, 63303. Go ahead, sir. Um, like. Ellie was saying there's four of us that we have the opportunity to extend our lots. The reason for this is when the uh, subdivision was built in 86, and none of us are the original owners that built there. We all bought the houses existing. 
and they cut out the woods behind us. And I guess the surveyors probably knew when we bought the house, but we didn't know that we weren't getting the backyards that it looked like we were getting uh, until the people behind us bought that property. They surveyed it, and when we saw the line come across, there was four of us, well, three of us for sure, that were shocked at how much yard we were missing because there was fences that had been up since 1986, well, somewhere, somewhere in the 80s, and... Uh, they weren't even on the properties that we owned, that we thought we owned. So now we have the opportunity to basically go back to what we thought was our, our original grounds. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. Any questions for Mr. McKenzie? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I mean, we're lucky, everybody's lucky that the, the current owner is willing to sell it and it looks like a, an easy solution. So mm -hmm. I, I like it when it works out this, this way. But, so. Anyone here to speak regarding this yes. request? Yes. Yes. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. You go one, to, the one at a time? Absolutely. Please. You saw me swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Bradley Touche. I live at 606 Avon Place on the street below the area that is being proposed to expand. Uh, I don't know if you have a satellite shot that would... Uh, our properties are down there. Mine is the gray roof. Um, I have video, I have images I can show you on my laptop if you'd like that I can show you. Uh, the reason that we are all here to uh, fight this uh, proposition is because that land is a steady slope straight down from the back of their property into ours, into the drainage creek, into the front yard. That we all have bridges that we have to cross to get to our houses. If, I don't know if anyone's done a watershed study, but if they strip out all those trees and bring that down to the very edge of my property, I've got a, a great room that was built onto the back of the house. I didn't build, it was there when I bought it, but that goes right up to the edge. And I, I've written out a, a bunch of points, I'll try to be quick, I appreciate the, the council's time, but this is very important because I feel like if this, if this gets torn down and, and uh, and the trees get removed, I'm going to get flooded out as well as the other properties. So, Bradley, do you think they're removing the trees after they get this I don't. With all due respect, sir, I don't see any reason why they would not go through this trouble if they don't have the intent of, bringing, of taking all those trees out. There's, they, they have a small backyard. I have a video that shows it. I understand that they have a small backyard. But why are they replat, replatting it if they're not going to clear it out and make a bigger backyard? And there's a huge drainage problem. I have a laser pointer, if you'd permit me to yeah, point while I can show you. Take the, the mic yeah. right there with you. Okay. I, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to, I've got 13 points, but I'm not going to go through all that. I just want to explain to you guys, this creek runs through Avon. All of these houses have bridges that go over that. This creek is eight feet deep. And now it's spring fed. Normally the water is only about ankle deep. But every time there's a heavy rain, and it's gotten worse since the page extension has gone through, that eight-foot creek will hop its banks and run along the river. Sounds like Thunder River when it does it right now. Now, uh, it, it only gets about to the surface of the river, but, or the surface of the road, but it goes all the way to the dead end road. Uh, my neighbor here, Kelly Permenter, is right here with us. His house gets mowed his backyard and his front yard. The creek will go around it during heavy rains. We have done extensive work. Uh, not only do I own this 606, but my father owned 600 and 612 when we rent those out. Those are units. <coughs> we have done extensive work to fight off the, the flooding conditions that, that we have to face during heavy rains. It's understandable we knew the problems when we purchased the properties. But to remove all of this wetland, and like I said, I have videos to show you. There's Trees down, there's lots of leaves. It absorbs the heavy rainwater. And even if it doesn't absorb it all, it slows it down. If we have to deal with water that's running about 30, 35 feet downhill <coughs> from the high, lowest point of their backyard, if you want to count to the bottom of the creek, it's about 40 feet that they drop 
in that, sp in that space. And heavy rainwater is going to increase the erosion. 600 has got a side creek right here that's mostly dry except during heavy rains. So this creek is running into this creek right here during heavy rains and they both flood. And St. Charles County is so aware of this problem that the edge along here where the creek runs along the side of the road, St. Charles County's dumped concrete on it to prevent erosion underneath the, de the dead end. So they're, they're aware of what's going on. We also had flooding problems because there was a house here at 609 and another one up at the top, 627. Those have already flooded out and been raised by HUD. And not only that, but St. Charles County also spent a significant amount of money in the past four or five years completely rebuilding Avon Place and even giving all of us owners fresh concrete approaches to the driveways. So all that money that was spent on the road, you're going to potentially lose at least four tenants or four homeowners <laughs> if the flooding goes through. And I'm sorry if I get a little excited about this, but my house was right up the edge of that hill. And if that water starts coming down any harder, I'm afraid my yard's going to, my house is going to get flooded. I've already got a five foot culvert dug that's one foot wide, one foot deep with a, a pipe that runs under my driveway <coughs> to dump off the water in the front yard. I am not asking anything of the council. I don't want any, I bought the property. I'm taking full responsibility for the drainage. But if they remove all those trees and put it right up to the edge, by the way, I do have a picture of that too. The edge of my property, there's a 10 foot cliff. It's about a slope that's about like that. You stand on the edge of that and you can see the, my, uh, my rooftop. It's the eye line of my second story roof from where I'm standing. That's the severe drought. The rest of it's a slow slope from the edge of their, uh, from the edge of their backyard straight into that. Now, like I said, my neighbor here, Kelly Permenter, lives at 601, which is on the other side. And here's the house that gets moated <coughs> when the creek floods. And this happens nearly every, 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 every heavy rain. Not every rain, but during the heavy rains, it'll flash flood and hop its banks. I don't know if anyone's done a watershed study, but if they're gonna to propose to remove all that property, all that tree, all that foliage, we're gonna have an erosion problem and 600 is gonna lose most of its land from erosion. And I'm gonna probably lose uh, the backside of my house because I've only got about a five foot space between that cliff essentially and so can and I ask I have, you a question? Have you talked to them about it? The people that are proposing? I, I was just notified by mail okay. about this two weeks ago, so all I've been able to do... So why don't we get them up and ask them if that's what they're planning to do? I don't think they're planning to cut down any trees. Again, with due respect, why are, if they're not going to do that, why, do they, why are they even bothering? We'll, we'll ask them that. We'll ask them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Those are good questions. So that's why, you know, it's good you're coming up. Okay. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, it, I've got two other people who'd like to speak, I believe, that's beforehand, fine. though. So fine. thank you for your time, Council. My name is Please. Dennis Touche. I live at uh, 129. I'm sorry. You solemnly swear I affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Dennis Touche. Uh, I live at 12986 Amboys Drive in uh, St. Louis. And uh, I own the, the properties adjacent to my son, uh, 600 and 612. And if you, uh, this is the map that uh, you all sent us in the mail. Could you put this on the screen or not? Just lay it on that. Can I put it on? Just lay it face up on that. Face up. Yeah. And I think it, you can see the extended area right here. This is the area that they want to add to their, their property here. Okay? These are the four lots that we're referred to. And this point of it is goes right down here up against 606, which is my son's property. This 600, 612 I own over here. There's, this, there's a big crest right here where this, my son's uh, lot is. And to the, the west side of it, the water runs down that way and it comes, 600, it comes over here to, this, um, <coughs> uh, to the east, I'm sorry, to the east side and runs right past my property over here. And every time it rains hard, I wake up at night and I wonder if my house is one of, or both of them got water in them, okay? Because there is, if you stand out during a heavy rain, I mean, it's coming down. I mean, there's, there's a couple inches of water coming off that hill. 
And we get water along the west side of um, 612 over here. We get water probably a half a mile away. Everything on the crest on upper and the river bend of states, everything, there's a hill there, everything there, everything south of that, we get it, okay? We get it from the top, and then we get it from the Page Street <coughs> extension on the west side, and that's when the, the creek floods. And it comes up over the, over the road, Avon uh, Place is flooded, and you can't drive down there when it's, it's flooding like that. So, yeah, we know we got a problem, but we're, any little, and everybody knows every time something is built, and a regular, normal surface terrain is disrupted, you've got more runoff. Everybody knows that, and that's what we're saying. If you clean that area out at any point, I don't care if you take a tree down, or if you just clean out the underbrush, which there is a lot of up there, and, and don't slow that water down, you're gonna get more and more down there. There's nothing there to take it off. So all we're saying is that we would really like for it not to happen, is what we're trying to say, protect our property, and uh, uh, water's tough. You can't, you can't fight Mother Nature when she's coming. You gotta protect yourself a little bit there. So if we're asking, that's why we're, of course, uh, raising an objection to the uh, addition of that property. And yeah. this, like I said, my son said, we've known, only known about a couple weeks. So, so uh, and that's why we're here. I, I don't know anything else. I got a question. Sure, guys. go ahead, go for it. When you were showing where the water was, the two, Lots that uh, is lot 52 and 51. The ones is that where the majority of the water is coming off? And then there's two other lots up to your right. The smaller lots. Uh, can you put? I can answer the, that. Where's, where's, I, the, where's I can the number? Hold, sir. Yeah. The, what uh, can you project that up again? Why you're pointing the the two lots. There's, okay. Uh, 52 and 51. <coughs> The one down in your lower left-hand corner. That way you have. Okay. This, this, There's no 50. This, this might be easier. Take the microphone sir, with you. Sir, take the microphone with you. There you go. Thank you. Now you're asking the question about which two lots. Which this way does the water come off? The last, those two lots on the left, on the okay. left-hand side. This, this is 600, 606, 612. And the, the ridge is right behind my son's house, right there, and it goes straight down. So water comes this way, off of there, and it goes that way. And over there, to the west side or, uh, of the uh, 612, that's where all of that water, the main gusts of that from River Bend, all of those, every street up there, all that drains right down there, and off that backyard, it just comes sloping down. This is a very steep, it's, a, well, it's really rock bluff is what it is, it's straight up and down right behind my son's house. It tapers a little more over there to the west, and it tapers a little more over here to the east. And then, of course, it comes over here, and runs down, there's a sidewalk, I'm not a sidewalk, a driveway, a common driveway for these two lots, 600 and, six, and uh, 606. And that's where all the water, water runs coming off of that hill. And then it comes down over, over here, because like my son said, there's a ditch, a drainage ditch over here, and then it goes down to the Missouri River. We're just concerned about the runoff. That's all we're saying. And it, you know, it's been that way for, you've been there 20 years? 25. 25, and I've been involved with it maybe 15 years, maybe. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead. Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to speak? You solemnly swear or affirm you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and these proceedings are under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Scott Schaefer, 7 River Valley Court, 63303. Um, I'm one of the property owners that's asking for the, um, to annex that, that property to the, the uh, Neighborhood Association. I can understand these gentlemen's concern about the runoff, but I think they are they're here for the wrong meeting. I think there's a zoning for that property owners of that property probably previously to this. He's concerned about trees being removed. There are no trees in the property that I'm trying to purchase. Um, when I moved in the house about 14 years ago, there was a tree line, and I think the contractor built that tree line, and people who bought the, uh, had the house and bought the property initially, they put their fence up against that tree line 
So when I moved in, I naturally thought that was my property. And so I've been mowing it and the weeding it and all that kind of stuff. And then the new property owners behind us in that area that's a runoff area, just I don't know to what extent, but I know that's where a lot of water runs through there. They came in and showed us that indeed my fence line, what I thought was my property, wasn't my property, was actually theirs. So I'm just trying to purchase, as well as the other um, neighbors of mine, trying to purchase the, the lot that we thought was originally ours. There, there's no trees on the lot that I'm trying to purchase. Um, I'm just trying to reclaim what I've been mowing and taking care of and what's where the fence line's been all along. So. Which lot is it? Microphone. Which lot are you, 52? Uh, <laughs> one. Let's see. Lot 50. Lot 50. Yeah, this one here. So, so the actual line was here, but you can see there's, there's no trees here. So we're not, I'm not wishing to buy it and cut down the trees. I'm just trying to rezone it to my, you know, purchase the property, and then have that annex to the homeowners association. That's the same thing right here. So th there's no change in runoff. There's no change in, um, the property whatsoever. So it's going to be the same property. Now that we own it, now it's part of Riverbend Estates. And that's the same thing for all the other properties too? Right. They just have fence lines that are running into the yeah. other person's yeah, property. Yeah, the contractor just cut these trees. I'm looking at the And I thought it, I thought it was mine here. all the time. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that point. Thanks. Can I come back up? Oh, well, you're the applicant. Just, just wait. No, he can't come back up. He can't. No. You've already spoke. Sorry. Anyone else? She's lying. I have oh, well, don't be careful what you say, sir. Yeah. You solemnly swear or affirm to uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings with the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name for the record. My name is Ryan Braun. I live at 627 Riverbend Estates Drive, St. Charles, Missouri, 63303. Uh, I'm vice president for the board of directors of the HOA uh, for River Bend. We had our meeting on April 18th of 2018. The, the members that are proposing this right now came forward, mentioned what they, were, what they were intending to do, and that was just purchase the property. Nothing was mentioned as far as any other changes at that meeting, and uh, the board gives its approval for that change to, to actually bring the land into the association. and have it under the covenants and restrictions. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Brock? No. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Arnie wants to talk. Thank you very much. I've already been sworn. Different okay. hearing. Gotcha. You saw me swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Arnie C. A. C. Dinoff, public advocate and resident, P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon, 63366. I'd like to, to encourage the commission, before making a recommendation to the county council, uh, I would encourage you to table this application for one month to give staff the chance to get the facts. We have two different groups here, two different sets of facts and two different testimonies. I'd like to get our professional staff to make a uh, site visit, which I think is really in order here. I think we need to go out and get a lay of the land and take some more in-depth pictures, do a more in-depth study and flood analysis uh, to find out the true facts here, as we have two differing facts from two different groups. Clearly, trees has a dramatic and a huge impact. Look at California, look at Colorado. When they're stripping of trees or cutting down the trees, you could flood somebody out or have somebody lose their entire uh, valuables and their entire home in one big heavy rainstorm. And if there's an agreement that can be hashed out, I want to see some recorded documents and an agreement recorded with the St. Charles County Recorder of Deeds that protects every property owner in this neighborhood and also future owners of the applicants. Because we all know 25, 50 years goes by, <clears throat> there's gonna be new owners of these homes in both River Bend Estates and also the bottom on Bottoms Road. And so there needs to be a recorded document to protect 
that no trees would be removed <coughs> and that nobody would be flooded out. For those reasons, I humbly ask the commission to table this application for one month so staff can sort out the facts, they can do a flood analysis, and we can get down to the crux of what the facts are. That's pretty out Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. If regard no. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so close the public hearing. Yep. Okay. We'll close the public hearing. We'll ask the applicant to come back. Okay, well, hopefully I can shed some good light on what's going on. Um, like Scott says, there's no trees on the property he wants. The Raphael's on the other side, there's no trees on that property. Better than half of what I want, there's no trees on there. But I did take my lot to go back deeper. The people behind us that they're here now tonight uh, that own the property, they're going to have horses back there. So we were just kind of looking to get a buffer zone because they're going to run a fence up there. I don't know if the horses are not going to be there full time or anything, but there's going to, mm -hmm. they're going to put a fence up there. I really didn't want a horse fence right at my, my line. But also, I do in the future want to build a garage, a, a detached garage back there. So the only trees that are going to be taken out might be a half a dozen trees to kind of get me back in there. What happens is at the at the tree line, mm. now the property just drops off like a rock. So there's going to be no clearing of any trees. The the biggest <coughs> lot over there that's closest to these gentlemen's property, that is the Deepmans. They are like animal lovers. They love the nature. Jerry would not let a tree go out of his yard. Uh, there's, I can guarantee nothing's going to be taken out there. It's more for him to have nature in his backyard so that uh, the horses and stuff don't come up too close to his house. And if anybody knows anything about horses, they tend to eat everything in sight. And things get pretty bare if you have horses. But uh, I do on my property how it, I'm the, I'm the second one from the left. <coughs> I will probably be back before you or whatever it takes to see about getting a detached garage built there. That's always kind of been my dream. Um, mm. It ain't like it's something I'm gonna do in the next probably six months to a year, but I would like to do it in the next couple of years. But uh, I can't imagine that those few trees that I would have to take <laughs> out to put the garage, because I have to have that for my setback. Like the neighborhood, I believe you guys are only seven feet or something on setback, but the neighborhood setback is 20 feet for whatever the, they did in the very beginning. So that's why I requested to go so deep into the woods so that if I put a garage, <coughs> my setback, I would still be in good shape to be able to do it. That's why he didn't just bring so, I mean, I look, as far as the trees, nobody has any plans to take any significant amount. I'm the only one that would take any trees out and it would just be enough to build a maybe six, 700 square foot garage. And most of the garage would be on the ground that's already treeless now, but I'd have to take a few out just to make sure they didn't fall on a storm or something to be on there, but there wouldn't be any significant trees being removed. Hmm. Any questions with you? Okay, thank you. We'll bring this back to the commission. Hmm. Any questions, comments, questions of staff? I guess my question is that could the existing owners theoretically take out trees there right now without any any uh, sort of hearing or, or whatever? I mean, do they have the right to remove trees right now? Yes, they, they have a right to remove okay. trees as it is right. yes, okay. on their property, including the new owners. Um, the only thing that I would also like to point out, we, we do go through a thorough review, uh, our development uh, review division, our engineering section did, did take a look at this. Uh, they signed off on it basically because the subdivision has <clears throat> its stormwater infrastructure in place. <coughs> Uh, development the homes are already all built nothing will really change except possibly an accessory structure 
Um, but going back and on, usually on preliminary plats, we have a tree preservation ordinance, and even that only requires 25% of the trees to be protected when they're out there grading and developing a preliminary plat. This plat is already in place. Um, you know, I, I well, <laughs> can I guarantee it? It's it's really not up to me. It's up to you to uh, assess whether. Right. Or not. I just wanted to know what. Yeah. The current. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a little concerned about the fact that uh, after hearing from from Steve that he's going to put a, another structure on his property, it doesn't stop the other homeowner on 52 from doing something similar, other than they can't get around the house possibly, but they can go back and why do they need that much property on 52? Why are they not just, are, are they on 52? Is there actually a fence line back there on 52? So can you come back up? Can I come back yeah. up and Yeah, that? I'm sorry. I should have asked why you're up here. Well, if you look at um, the way behind 52 goes, mm -hmm. if I bought my land coming back, we would basically landlock the owners now yeah, there's a, there'd be a piece up there you. that they wouldn't have act. They would still own it and not have access to. So mm -hmm. the smartest move you. was to just draw the line straight across okay. and take the property. I mean, truly, Jerry don't probably don't even want that much property, yeah. but that's the way the line goes to. So he's not using that. that back there right now. No, there's trees on it currently. There's trees on it, and the if you kind of if you look at this little section right. There, mm -hmm. the neighborhood owns that, that the white part there, right. and that's behind Jerry's house. It's all woods, and, and that's all community property for the neighborhood. And but like I say, if I buy property behind my house, it's going to landlock this little piece of property for the homeowners now, the property owners now. So the only logical thing to do was to take the whole thing. So what about guaranteeing? How would we guarantee they don't cut the trees down? What can we do about that? I'd like to keep that. Is there anything we can do as a commission? Well, if you walk back there, I mean, if anybody saw the property, it goes yeah, like this. Why would you take that? I mean, <laughs> I live on the property like that, and I take trees down all the time because they're dead. And it's well, I mean, you have I'm to just, I'm just telling you that you don't know what's going to happen. So I'm not aware of anything in the ordinance that would have. Because I want to respect the other people's property, too. You know, and were, he's concerned about it. Well, um, there's nothing to stop people taking down trees now or later, except for I, I suppose if you change the, uh, there may be, um, if one prop, if, if something that one property owner does harms another property owner, there may be um, uh, something. Civil action. Civil action. Potentially. Yeah. I don't know that. I'm not an attorney, but I'm right. just. There may be other remedies other than <coughs> county zoning regulations in play. Um, the other thing I can think of is our development review division does require permitting if you are going to clear trees or do any land disturbance of 5,000 square feet or greater. Um, and typically what happens is if somebody is doing something without permits, and even if it's not 5,000 square feet, they have to, they should get a land use permit from planning and zoning. Um, but typically, what happens is um, we get calls if if somebody's cutting down trees and and disturbing the land. And also, since it is in a in a plat, the way it lays, it, it's not going to be changed. <coughs> it has we can't make them keep every single tree right. trees are going to fall down they're going to yeah. die you're going to have to replace them um, but they they do have to keep that same grade basically as what they submit with that topography so any grading or any any changes like that you know they would be monitored okay thanks That's thanks it. sir thank you any other questions staff comments if not, Chair will entertain a motion to approve PRE 18-12, which is the replatting of lots 49 through 52 
of Riverbend Estates, Plat 2, 9 Valley View uh, Court, or River Valley Court, rather. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Kinghammer, Mr. Second. Leonard, second. Okay. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Coon? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yep. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Cleary? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. We didn't get the vote, huh? Next on the agenda is uh, application PRE 18 5, preliminary plat for Sorensen Kennels, location Highway Double D. Owner is Kimberly Oberlag. Applicant is Ben Schiller, engineer, landmark surveying company, property zoning A Agricultural District, area 12.67 acres, number of lots two. Location is on the northwest corner of Highway Double D in uh, Garrett Lane, Council District 2. Staff. All right, we have another plat um, that's a result of, of uh, too many splits of the original parcel. Uh, in 1999, the Unified Development Ordinance went into effect, and based on uh, the ordinances, uh, no more than two properties less than 10 acres can be uh, parceled off of the original parcel. So consequently, um, <clears throat> This applicant would like to uh, redivide the remainder land of 12.67 acres into a 7.67 acres and a five acre parcel. Um, this is the five acre would be the minimum for agricultural zoning. Uh, the applicant is uh, also proposing to access lot two. Lot number one is already developed. Um, it is the, the parent parcel, um, but it's already been split off, like I explained. Um, lot two would like to access the property via Garrett Lane. Uh, I think they are currently working <coughs> on getting private road access. Uh, and that is, that is the only remaining item on this plat. Uh, staff is recommending approval. Any questions of staff? Applicant, come forward. She's the owner. Is she supposed to be up here? Well, I'll just swear you both in at the same time. <laughs> you uh, solemnly swear or affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these pen in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Ben Schiller, 985 Highway DD, Defiance. Kimberly Oberlag, 1083 Highway DD, Defiance, 6034. Okay. Go ahead. Um, she pretty much explained it. Um, she gifted me the five acres to build a house for my family, and there's been too many separations. So we're just trying to get it to where there are two lots to where I can build on that. What is the process of getting, uh, is, is Garrett uh, currently a private borough then? No. There's no record of anyone owning it. I've looked into it. She used that road. She owns, there's not a big map, but she owns property further back from there. And that was her original driveway, 1980, 81. Pops up but the Ridgefield, yeah. That, well, you can't, that square right back there behind that building. Mm -hmm. No. no? No, well, her house is her old house. Yeah, that property there, Garrett Lane used to go all the way back there, but then Ridgefield Subdivision bought that property and took those houses that used to be back there out. So that's part of Ridgefield now. So that road no longer goes all the way back there. So that's the only record that we have. But I looked into it and the uh, survey company couldn't find anyone that owns the road. It's mainly just an access point to get to those three lots that are there. So mine's from Double D, I would be the first one, if you're looking at Double D on the left, probably about 30, 30 feet. I come off of Double D on the Garrett and then turn right into my where my driveway would be. Yeah, probably 10, 15 no, that's feet. about 30. So you said there's an easement for the other properties to access that currently? Did the other three uh, properties? There's 
a piece of property in the back that no one lives on. There is a property um, that someone lives on, and then the other property has their own driveway. Off of DD. But her property doesn't start till where that dead ends there. See how it slopes off? That's her property. The other property has its own driveway in front there. So I'm not cr cutting through anyone else's land. So who do they have the easement from? The, uh, uh, do you know? We don't know. Okay. Nobody seems to own it. <coughs> but that, when I built my house in the back, 1069, that's how I originally got there until my <coughs> parents gave me an easement, a right of way through the main property. It was like 54 acres. My brother got 27 and I got 27. Any further questions? If for some reason they were found out that they actually had to get a right from that R access it off of uh, the highway, would you have to have approval from, uh, I guess probably approval from- I would think so, but it's, it's, it's pretty there. dangerous there. There's a hill. Right. And that Garrett is in a low spot. That's originally, because I walked it before I decided to do this. And that's the, really the only safe location to pull out of without, right. you know, I got young kids and sure. when they start to drive, it's going to be pretty scary. So it'd be pretty scary wherever they are. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So there's a drive. Thank you. Anyone here to speak regarding this application? Anyone here to speak? If not, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. I would just say, I know though, I live very close to there. I'm very familiar with it and I've seen the property. I think it's a, uh, a very good proposition what they're gonna do with the land, with Sorensen's council. I make a motion to approve PR East 18-15. second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kuhn, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Cleary? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. And Mr. Fromm? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Now, back to. Okay, that's all that we have. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the July 18th, 2018 regular meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, sign aye. 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 Okay. Any other business? Staff? I do. Um, I think one of the things that would uh, help the this board function a little better would be if we had, um, if we required site plans that were more detailed than, than what our current um, standard operating procedure or ordinance actually requires. Um, I think it, uh, we saw another example of it tonight that uh, when you have a site plan that's conceptual in nature, it, it uh, sometimes raises more questions than it does answers. Um, and I, I think it would help us make a, a better, more informed decision. I think it would also, and I think more importantly, the neighbors um, would have a better understanding of, of what was being proposed there. That's the, that's the positive side as I see it. The, the negative side, of course, it will be more cost. Um, if someone's serious about developing it, though, there's going to be cost. So they're going to have to do the same <coughs> site plan anyway. And if we really look at the numbers, the vast majority of the plans that come before us are approved anyway, and they still have to uh, to, to incur those costs. So I I think that it would it would be a good idea. But I'm I'm looking to the to this board to to see what you all think. I, th I think in the UDO, isn't there, it lays out about <coughs> 15 requirements right now already for a, what the site plan is supposed but to receive. The site plan, that, and what I'm talking about is making the site plan more detailed, the requirements in that UDO to be more, um, more specific than, than what's there now. Um, some of the time we've, we've received plans that were as sketchy as something written on the back of a napkin. Yeah. And, uh, 
and it meets uh, the back of the napkin plan meets the UDO. I, I don't think that that gives us enough information to make a fully informed decision. I think it causes a lot of questions with, with, uh, with the residents. So would that require a change in the UDO then? Yep. And that's you? That's us. But I'm, if I do this, I want to go to them and say, hey, I've been you know, working with the P&Z board, and this is something <laughs> that we think is a good idea. Um, and I'm not going to do that if, obviously, if the board doesn't think it's a good idea. So I'm, yeah, well, I'm the, asking for feedback So at the example point. today is the gentleman got denied. That's one. And yeah. He, so he's not going to go do any preliminary real engineering drawings because he doesn't want to spend the money because he got denied, unless he gets approved I, at the county. I, I believe he... He's going to go do that anyway, really? so that he'll have a plan better when he comes to the county. I got gotcha. you. When he comes to the council, he'll have a better plan and try to get it over and try to get it to, to show what what he's really doing. I got gotcha. you. I, I think it would be personally my opinion is it would be better to have a little more detail on these. I, I, as you say, the downside is that the the applicant would have to front some more money, and, and certainly uh, that's something we have to be conscious of there it's their money uh, but I, I do think that uh, for instance on the one tonight we're talking about by the time you're talking about the additional setback from the <coughs> potential highway widening and you know what kind of buffer zones are going to be created it's, if you look at the area map that was all residential around there uh, there's no real uh, detail about how to protect those properties. I personally would would want more detail. And maybe it would have passed if you had more detail too. Possibly, yeah. I, I think it would have passed. Yeah, but, yeah. The okay. uh, the other thing that I'm going to talk to the rest of the council about is improving the technology within this room. <laughs> um, I think I'm one of the youngest guys up here, and I can't see half of the maps that we're we're looking at up on that. I uh, brought that up six months ago. Yeah, I can't and, see anything. Yeah, from the the physical location down there, it's hard to see here at a, at such a uh, obtuse angle. Um, and looking at it from here, the the, the detail is uh, not good, um, and we don't even have a decent way for people to point out what they're talking about. I mean, it's just uh, would help some of that. Uh, it would. Detail um, on the map would yeah, be a lot better. Yeah, I. Even if you had a pointer, though, I'm looking at it, and yeah. you can't uh -huh. read what's what's written on it. You're, you're talking about lot lines that that are invisible from from this distance. I discussed that in the back with the staff about six months ago. Maybe the lighting. Also, they said they were working on maybe if they can get this on this these screens for us. Popped up here, that would be ideal. But that, yeah, that would be the best. Yeah, that's how the people here need to see it too. Exactly. You know, in the audience, that's the other yep. problem. They can't see it. Yeah, there, so what screen it, up there. Yeah. With uh with the board's concurrence and I will I'll take those two messages back. Yeah. See if we can't work something out of great. When you have a county council meeting, do you have things on your screen? No. We get the agenda it these come up and and have the agenda on it. But that's and it. the supporting documents. But uh um there's no way we don't have the technology now if someone <clears throat> puts an image on the on the fancy overhead projector, it doesn't show up here. Um, so, I, to me, that thing's about useless. Fancy overhead projector. Well, it is a little fancier than the sun. <laughs> sure. But uh, it doesn't have the light bulb on it like the old ones did. Right. Well, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. Okay. Robert, uh, master plan? Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to give you um, just a quick update. St. Charles County, um, as you know, our current master plan is the 2025 master plan, which was uh, approved by the county council in 2013. And under the county's charter, the, uh, the county is tasked with reviewing uh, the master plan every five years. And uh, so the uh, county council and the county executive have appointed a master plan steering committee to, um, to review uh, the, the county master plan and see if any changes are, are warranted or any updates are, are warranted. So there's actually 21 steering committee members which have been appointed and they've just begun meeting. But uh, the plan is to, by the end of this year, have a draft that could be prepared for any changes that might be recommended to the county council. 
uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission would play a role in this, um, in particular, hearing or reviewing uh, a, a draft that's <coughs> recommended by the uh, steering committee and uh, providing input and making a recommendation to the, to the county council. But again, ultimately, it would be up to the county council to decide whether to adopt a, a, a revised plan or not. I should let you know that um, the idea is not necessarily to create a whole new master plan, but to, you might call it uh, tweaks or corrections or some minor updates. The reasoning behind that is uh, there'll be a, there's going to be a new census in 2020. Those census results will be, the details of it will be released probably in 2022, and that's about the time that five years from now we would be uh, undergoing a, another master plan review. So at that time, we would have really solid information and, and numbers in terms of, uh, of um, population um, and population counts. Currently, we're working with what's called the American Community Survey. American Community Survey is, um, the results of those are uh, done by sampling. Uh, the Census Bureau does, sends out questionnaires and does sampling. And so there's a lot of variability, honestly, in those the American Community <coughs> Survey numbers. So we're hoping that with the 2020 census, which will be undertaken in less than two years now, we'll have, uh, we'll have better numbers. And at that time, we will, after that uh, result, we'll be able to prepare um, um, traffic modeling, which will be much more accurate. And also we're thinking that land use uh, could go hand in hand with uh, the updated traffic modeling. So I think what we're anticipating, again, are some um, minor updates, but I want to let you know about this process that we're undergoing. I should also mention that Mike Klinghammer is serving on the Master Plan um, Steering Committee. Are you ever home? No. <laughs> so, so Robin, uh, how, much, how far in advance does the County Road Board and MoDOT uh, kind of give you long-range plans? Because it would be nice if you had that information in your, you know, in your tweaking. Right. Yeah, we recently met with a focus group for transportation and the thoroughfare plan specifically. And so we're, um, we'll be updating the thoroughfare plan, we're thinking, with the, the newest information. Uh, but again, we're thinking it's we're not gonna we're not thinking it's, we're gonna blow it all up and begin over again. But there sure. are some things that need some Just, yeah. updates and corrections. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I watched the last county council meeting when this was brought up, and Steve Elman had appointed diff different people from uh, different districts. I was on the um, uh, master plan committee before you with your predecessor uh, Wayne Anthony and. There were two people on the Planning and Zoning Commission that we participated, myself and Sandra Polly. And there were probably, in the initial meeting, we had three or 400 people representing different groups, um, different demographics from uh, St. Charles County, from large uh, landowners to small businesses and so forth and so on. Uh, the initial meeting, uh, we met in groups of uh, 15 and we each each group uh, came up with different concepts and each group had a representative from all these demographics it was a very interesting procedure because we all came up with maps of st. Charles and they were put on walls like this so you got a different viewpoint from uh, not only residents but including participation for planning and zoning. And that's what formulated a lot of the uh, uh, different definitions of zoning. We went to, uh, and of course, the county lines where we had agricultural and uh, <coughs> higher density districts. But I noticed this time uh, planning and zoning was not, I guess, a different procedure uh, developing on the, the new master plan. Well, we have uh, Mike Klinghammer, who's a Master Plan Steering Committee member, and I need to report back to you on a regular basis about um, what our progress is. I should also mention that we're planning on a public open house and a public, a public feedback session on October 10th, 
and so we are actively planning for that um, public open house. We're, I, I think uh, what Robert mentioned, this one is, what we're doing now is an update to the master plan from, as we're not going anywhere near as, as in-depth and, 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 and going through the master, the, a true planning process. It's a, this one's more of a, a, a mid-season update rather than, than a, a complete new plan. So it's, it's we're, we're, not, uh, we're not going anywhere near the, to the depth that you guys did before. Are there questions regarding the 2030 master plan process? If not, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor, sign aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>